it's been quite a while, hasn't it? Since we've done one of these streams like this. Um, since we've had a stream where uh, it's been 9.30, where a stream where we've had the old intro music with the hidden Morse code bit in the, mid in the middle as well. It's been quite a while since all of this, but most importantly, it's been two weeks since the game released. The devlogs are a bit misleading in what was teased. 13 days since the servers were fixed. The first five days should just be completely nixed. Three days since we were promised a patch. It was split in two, but now delayed, and that's the catch. But yesterday, I finally gave up because playing every heist 300 times fucking sucks. And that is ultimately the main thing with payday free right now no matter how fun the game is no matter how long it lasts the progression system is fucked and it just isn't fun once you run out of the other stuff that to do that is kind of the big issue at the minute and it's the hot topic that everybody and their grandmothers has discussed the game's been out for two weeks and a lot has happened in those two weeks also a lot has not happened in those two weeks because the game was unplayable for the first five days. I say unplayable, it wasn't actually unplayable, it was only it was only playable at off hours when people were at work or school, which for most people means that it was unplayable. Last Tuesday they released a, oh, sorry, they didn't release a patch, there have been no patches yet, that's kind of the, one of the big issues, there haven't been any patches released yet. They took down the server for maintenance and that did improve the stability a lot and then on Friday they did the same thing and that and stability's been fine since then. I think they did another um, like server um, side patch uh, a while back, like a few days ago as well, but generally speaking the servers are fine now and the game has been playable, which is good. But the problem now is that, like I said, the progression is kind of shit. So I did in fact write this down so I remembered it, um, but I'm, I, I want to go through these a little bit because these are all each very important milestones in this game's uh, release that I think we should uh, we should really take the time to break down because each of these lines is something that's happened. This one was just the first five days being shit. We're going to ignore that one. Um, so the devlogs. The I think the, the the big standout thing from the devlogs is when they said if you wanted to make a build where you could kill bulldozers in two hits you could do that. If you wanted to be the bulldozer killer and make a build specifically to kill bulldozers in two hits, you could do that. What they meant was one of the overkill weapons, the Red Fox Sniper Rifle, kills bulldozers in two body shots. That is not a build, that is a weapon that you can call in after a certain amount of time has passed and is limited in its use that can two-shot bulldozers. That is not a build. That is not the same thing. The other thing that has, that has stood out to me as well is I know there was, I think there was an, it was either an interview with Almia or something like that before the game released where um, it was like some journal, game journalism site um, where they said something about how during one of the playtests or beta sessions or whatever, um, one of the players came up with the idea of putting a micro camera onto the other player's back so that they could sit and like mark guards behind them and watch what's going on behind them. And that's cool, except you can't put fucking equipment onto other players in the actual game. You can put them on AI, you can put them on uh, anything that isn't a player, but you can't put micro cameras onto players. Why? Who the fuck knows? That's not a thing you can do. That was explicitly mentioned in one of the interviews or something that someone came up with the idea of doing and seemingly did. Uh, or maybe it was never a thing they could do, but they just had the idea of doing it and the devs were like, yeah, that's a cool idea, let's not implement that. Whatever it was, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird that like a lot of the, uh, the stuff in the build-up to the release of the game was about things that just aren't true or are only partially true or just seemingly aren't possible in the final game at all. I think it's fair to say that the release of this game has been very fucked. It seems very rushed. It very much feels like a bear. 
in how much stuff is missing. The user experience is dreadful. The UI is dreadful. There's so much stuff that's missing. All of the outfits are just variations of each other and the variations don't collapse into like one item. So they all take up different slots, which just makes it really messy and complicated to look for. You can't move items in your inventory. There's no one ready button. That's the big one. Everything is really badly explained. The ass I'll launch the game now so I can actually like start showing some of this stuff in game but like the asset system is not really explained anywhere when you level up or when you finish a heist you don't get told what you've what you've unlocked because you gain like the heist specific favors you gain them by finishing heists the game doesn't tell you this and nowhere does it inform you of what you've obtained the game is so incredibly fucked and it's sad because I love this fucking game so much. The actual gameplay is fine. The actual gameplay is good. It's fun. It's just everything surrounding it is dog shit. Like actual dog shit. Like it genuinely just feels like a, like it was rushed out. I, I don't even know if I'd say a few months too early. Maybe like a year too early. But yeah, there's so much stuff that needs to be better explained or like reworked or changed. The challenge system. The challenge system is the main one because... I can show you in a minute, but right now I'm level 116. I have completed all of the weapon challenges. The only combat challenge I haven't completed is the save teammates from Tazers one, and that's because it's bugged. It only goes up if you are the person being tased and someone else saves you from a taser, which doesn't include bots, it has to be a player. A player has to save you from a taser and then it goes up, which is the exact opposite of what the challenge says it is. And because that requires you to play other people and it's such a specific scenario, like I guess you could grind it on normal probably pretty easily, but that means you have to just sit there on normal and have someone else with you to just like melee the same taser over and over again to free you from them. That doesn't sound very fun. So that is the only combat challenge I haven't done, is the high siren G. So, let me just let me just quickly say I have played for almost 200 hours apparently I didn't even realize it had been almost 200 hours um there is high siren G but it's very subtle very very subtle high siren G also those 200 hours are not actually 200 hours because the first five days were unplayable and probably at least like 20 hours of that is just waiting for servers to work so it's probably more like 180 hours whatever but yeah I'm level 116 if I go to my combat challenges, like I said, save current throws up 30 times, 6 times. So these ones I've done because they're bugged. Korea, I've done all of them except for reaching new levels and completing a heist with mods unlocked on the Carthor because those ones are locked for some fucking reason. Uh, and I've done all of the heist challenges except for these three because functional training doesn't work, uh, grab and crack doesn't work, cool customer, I haven't tried it because it sounds really awkward and annoying, but I'm gonna guess it also doesn't work. I've done all the challenges now, which just means all I have to do is play every heist 300 fucking times, and that's not fun. So I'm, like, I've just kind of, like, the only way for me to make progress now is to just grind out heists, like, oh, if I do under the surveys on an overkill in loud, I can get 180 XP. That will get me, oh, sorry, IP, because they're infant points. That will make barely any progress towards my next level. Hmm, I wish you just gained infamy points for playing the game. That would be much, much better. But yeah, like this is literally all I can do now is just grind heist, and that doesn't sound very enjoyable. I have all the weapons. I did do the 99 boxes uh, glitch to get them all to max level because some of these weapons I was not going to max out. I really do not like using the Ziv. You know, such an issue in power level of weapons, but then you're still in the same situation, right? Because you would still just have to grind fucking heists to... Uh, to get the weapons to max level so that you can complete the challenge. You still wouldn't be making any progress. Even if you even if you were grinding the weapons, you still wouldn't be making any progress and you'd have to level up weapons that you didn't enjoy using. Like I said, I don't enjoy using the Ziv. I've, it takes so many shots to kill. I just don't enjoy using it. Um, same with all the other SMGs in the game. I think all the SMGs are fine. They're just not for me. And I wouldn't want to spend actual hours grinding the same weapons that I don't enjoy using just to get a little bit of XP for it. That doesn't sound very fun to me. So yeah, I did use the 99 boxes glitch, but it was it was mainly just because I didn't fucking enjoy using half these weapons. Uh, to be fair, I did enjoy the... I enjoy the assault rifles. The shotguns are fine as well. Uh, the assault rifles are fine. I just don't really like the SMGs much. Or the Rheinfeld. The Rheinfeld is really slow. Um, not really a fan of that either. To be fair, I did actually max level um, the Signature 40, the Castiga and the Model 11 just by playing the game. Uh, I could have done the same with these three as well, but because I was already doing the 99 boxes glitch, I figured 
might as well keep doing the 99 boxes glitch and just get these ones done as well especially because the strike you need the suppressor which is locked at level nine which is kind of nuts because that means you have to grind it to level nine before you can do the suppressor challenges your model of LXP still glitched and stuck at 12 that sucks but yeah for RNG since obviously people have been talking about in chat there is RNG it's just very subtle and there aren't many differences and if you restart it keeps the same RNG uh but yeah like what changes are the Norris of the Wicked um one of the power boxes can spawn in a few different places the keycard room can be on the roof or on the second floor the safes can be in different places you don't need to open the safes is that it the code i guess there's also the code but the code is different on every house that's where that has randomization red ridge uh the truck either goes left or right and the helicopter arrives on the left or right that's it uh dirty ice nothing is different in dirty ice i think it's just the keycard locations the uh the red no yeah the red key cards can spawn in slightly different places yeah the door code can be in a different place but but the same three door codes always spawn each time it's just the correct door code that changes what is the bag box i don't know what bag box means oh and road rage oh yeah the 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 box with the thing that you put on the card that also can spawn in like three different places so that's and the uh wheel ramps can also spawn in different places as well and the uh electrical box to open the gate can spawn in like two different places so there is a little bit of randomization but generally like you just check like three different locations for each thing and you find it so it's not too hard and most of them are like along the path that you need to go down anyway so you'll find them along the way it really doesn't change anything but yeah yes yeah, so it's the code the correct code is one of the three different locations the phone the fun outside can spawn in two different locations uh the red key card can sometimes spawn in the basement the basement door can sometimes be unlocked uh, like the door to the power box room i think that's it not really anything substantial uh rock the cradle in self you've got what you call it the the crypto room the security room and the vault can all spawn in like alternating locations so they all spawn in the same three places but the location of each one can be different between runs um the machines who authenticate the vip pass can be in one of three different places it's always free isn't it it's always in like groups of three there's always three different combinations for things now that i think about it power box and loud can be in two different places uh the correct box and color that you have to cut I want to say the correct box and the correct colour are random, but I'm pretty sure there's actually a preset list of correct bo uh, box and colour combinations on Rock the Gradle, uh, because I've never seen it be red and there are certain letters where I've never seen it pick them. Um, like once you do that heist 40 times on overkill, you start to notice that all of the combinations are exactly the same. Uh, it's just random which combination you get, but you always get the same combinations. It's really weird. <laughs> So I think the uh, box combinations on, Rule of, on Rock the Cradle are preset like combinations and it's not truly random. How many times have I done it total? We can have a look, can't we? Uh, 85. I've done it 85 times. That's on hard, but it's also the same on normal, I think. I've done it 85 times in self. And after doing it 85 times, you start to notice it's kind of the same combinations every time. <laughs> Like, it's not truly random. It's never red, and there are certain boxes that it will never be. Um, it's always green, blue, or white, and white is pretty rare. There's only a few boxes where you'll ever see it be white. It's normally blue or green. But yeah, so that's Rock the Cradle. Under the surface... Um, I think under the surface, the only difference is where the rooms spawn on the top floor. I think that's literally the only difference. Everything else is the same. The phone downstairs in the bathroom can either spawn in the male bathroom or the female bathroom. Other than that, I think everything else is the same. The painting, the correct painting is random as well. And I guess the secret painting, the statues that you have to pick up for the secret painting change as well. That's kind of it. There isn't really anything substantial in under the surface. It's just the rooms where everything spawns. And by that, I mean like the security room, the manager's office, the supply room, those rooms, not like the actual exhibit rooms. The exhibit rooms are always the same. And like what's in them are pretty much exactly the same as every time as well, I think. Golden Shark, the blue key card can spawn in like two different, three different places, sorry, and maybe two two three the correct box colors at the end are different the man uh, the correct uh, room for the red key card uh that one's random the camera outside the vault sometimes spawns on the left or the right pillar i'm really running out of ideas there really isn't anything with all the shark that changes either nine boxes you either go to the west side or the east side 
To be fair, that's quite substantial because the layout of the west and the east side are completely different. And also, if you get one, if you get the side that isn't close to the um like back way into the warehouse, it becomes really difficult to get the bags in in time. I think that's it. I think that's actually it. Like I, I don't know if Nightmare Boxes realize anything else either. The liquid nitrogen can be in a different crate. The computer that you need to hack can be different. One of two computers. The containers at the end are random, like the correct containers. I'm pretty sure the same guards have the QR codes every time. What I think of the music is fine. Rock the Cradle's mu uh, loud music is really good. And the rest of the Wicked is okay. Uh, the rest of them, I don't really remember them too much. But just, no, uh, Nine in Boxes sends out to me is one that I remember as well. The rest of them, I don't really remember too much. I can say the same about Payday 2 as well. Like, uh, Payday's music is fine as well. I don't remember half the songs in that game either. So, yeah. Yeah, Rock the Cradle is literally like a fucking Doom song. It sounds fantastic. Touch the Sky, the filing room can be on the top or bottom floor. That's it. That's the only thing that's on my head that's different. The filing room can be on the top or bottom floor. Um, maybe the blue key card can spawn in a different place on a different guard. Poison! Sorry, the poison spawns in a different place as well. There's two different spawns for the poison that I'm aware of. Three, maybe? I don't think it can ever spawn in the upstairs bathroom at least i've never seen it up there every other downstairs like side room it can spawn and i'm pretty sure so yeah other than that there really isn't like much randomization in this game all things considered and because when you restart it saves the randomization it feels even less varied which is kind of a problem but i think on higher difficulties it should definitely um reset the randomization at least like on like on not like normal i could see being like a kind of learn the heist beginner mode where it could make sense to keep the same seed as you said, um, but on the higher difficulties I think it makes more sense to reset. The devs have said that they are thinking about doing exactly that, making the higher difficulties like reset everything every time you reset, which would be good. However, the devs have also said that there was a patch coming on October 5th uh, that they had to then delay and split into two parts because the second part well, they couldn't release for the first part, um, but the first part was still coming on October 5th and then on October 5th they delayed the whole patch because they couldn't get it certified for consoles in time. Um, so it's now going to happen in two weeks and we don't know if they're recombining the patches or if they're still split in two parts. But there's also a later patch in late October, so now there's a patch in mid-October that we don't know if it's in two parts and a patch in late, late October that's actually going to add new stuff. Really cool! Uh, god, right. Yeah, I mean they had to spend like the first week just fixing the servers though, didn't they? Like the first week was just them panic fixing the servers because the servers didn't fucking work. Like it really just feels like this was released at least two months too early, I would say. And now they just have to like try and fix everything they can. Oh, and there's also the, uh, what you call it? this, I, I talked about it when the game was released, this menu is dog shit. I'm, at least I think I mentioned this. I think this menu is dog shit, especially with the story videos thing. This is not gonna live up to uh, future updates, but there was uh, apparently a, a unused menu hidden in the game. Basically there was a like more Payday 2-esque kind of crime net menu hidden in the game that people have found and modders have re-enabled, um, which is just a list. It's just a list of all the heists and it gives you the um, security info, the like modifier info. I don't know why they removed it and why they went up with this menu instead. This menu is not good. Um, take this card. Take this card. Here it is. So this is obviously an unfinished menu um, that is like very much not done. Why can I not actually open the image? Anyway. It's a nice list! This would work for... Like... Like, it just needs a bit of fleshing out. It just needs a bit of, like, polish on the visuals, but... This would work fine! Why was this removed? You have to click more to quit the game. Ex yes, I'm so fucking glad you said that. I think the only reason it's like that is because of consoles, I think. I think that's probably the only reason it's like that, but the fact they hit it under more pisses me off. It's so dumb. Why is it here? Why is it here of all places? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you saw it for. Pretty missed. But yeah, here's something fun though uh, that I discovered uh, about weapon customization because this pattern system is dumb and really not good, but you want to know something really cool? Paint Stripper is extremely based because in my first stream i saw paint stripper and i thought you have to pay to remove colors that's not how it works now you wonder how it works it's really cool but it isn't explained anywhere and you only find this out if you decide to mess with it so you have these patterns which work exactly how you would expect they allow you to do certain stuff like that and then you can apply a base to the rest of the gun but you know what else you can do 
You know what else you can do? If I, if you apply a pattern and then you apply paint stripper, you can make it look like the depot gun. So now you can kind of do the invert of the pattern, the inverse of the pattern. So you effectively have not 13 patterns, but 26. Why is this like hidden under fucking paint stripper? Like here, like, this isn't really explained very well what this does. I am excited because the potential for paint stripper as a color is really high. But it's not, like, obvious at all what the fuck it does, unless you mess with it. They really should have just given you the option to paint whatever part of the gun you wanted, rather than doing it this way, because this is so difficult to figure out. Even, like, with this knowledge, it's still hard to, like, do something, like, interesting, like, to, like, come up with interesting ways of using it. So I think I've done it on the, um, yeah, I've done it on the, uh, thingy, the rhino? Bison? The bison. Where all of, where I've set all of the colours to, um, black silver chrome except for color four because that would be the handle and because of this and because the whole thing is black silver chrome uh the base is black silver chrome the handle is that but if i apply paint it looks normal again this looks okay but the only way to do that is to realize how paint stripper works it's really fucking weird that they've done it this way and just haven't allowed you to do that also i don't like how the handle isn't actually painted properly there's like a weird like bit at the bottom there if it was just like cut off at the bottom there at any time but it's not it goes a bit onto the handle it's really weird the grip sorry it's the grip not the handle sorry my bad all the gun nerds are seething the pain system is badly explained badly implemented i think masks i still feel the same way i did when the game came out i don't like half of them my main issue is just that you have to be high level to unlock some of the last stuff that i want uh like i think this would be a fucking sick combo but uh it's level 135 <laughs> I'm not level 135. Hold on, let me just uh, equip that again. Like, this would look kind of cool, but it's 135, so I can't get it. Unless I grind, like, 500 ice. Pretty cool. That's my other problem as well. The only options you have for colouring weapons are a matte pin, a slightly shiny pin, or, like, a metallic pin. You have no other material options. It's all pin. I, like, I, I would like to be able to maybe make certain parts wood, or some other material, but no, it's all matte, slightly shiny, or metallic, and that's it. There's no other options. Like, why can I not, like, recolor certain parts of my other weapons to be, like, wooden or something? Why can I not do stuff like that? I don't know. Also, speaking of the uh, fucking DMX, this is the only one I haven't actually painted. I cannot figure out a good way to paint this, honestly. I, like, all the, all the options for it just look really, really fucking weird. And then there's the fact that um, these two are locked to high level, but these are some of the best options for painting stuff. Uh, like, you want to see the fucking SP-111? I, I have a note somewhere with what I wanted on this. Do I have, still have the note? I still have the note. Hold on. So it's 119. Pain scheme 12. Yeah, pain scheme 12. Follow on was... I'm just going to leave the base as it is for now and then figure it out from the next system. This might be different now to what I was wanting, but... Actually, I think this is basically how I was wanting it now. Let me just let me just go through the note that I've got here anyway, because I think this this one looked kind of neat, but it only works for Penskin 12. Black Silver Chrome. Okay. Yeah, Rust and Metal would be neat as well, yeah. If you had, like, more options for stuff. Uh, Colour 2 was non, so I guess I'll sell that to Pain Tripper just so it's fine. Black Silver Chrome and then Gold Chrome. Yeah, so this, is, this, so this is how I was... This is the note that I had for how I wanted this to look. It's kind of neat, but it requires level 119, which I'm only three levels off, but that would take fucking ages. Uh, to be fair, I think it was actually like this because I didn't have a base color on it. But yeah, it's just kind of disappointing. There's also the problem I have of I'm not sure what deployable to bring to my self build because none of these are really useful. Like uh, the ammo bag is theoretically useful if you have throwing knives and the skill that lets you restore throwables for ammo bags because then you can use them as lures, but I've just been using the armor bag for when it goes loud instead. The alternative problem in loud, the infrasonic mine is really like the only tool that's actually useful in loud, from what I can, from like in my opinion anyway, because it lets you just stun people. The motion sensor only marks 15 enemies and then it stops working forever, which is really shit. ACM jammer not going to be useful in loud. Micro camera, maybe? Maybe there's like certain situations where you could use it. Um, Probably not. <laughs> The Infrasonic Mine is actually the only one that I think works in loud. It's just, I, I think if they had like more tools that were useful, like specifically for stealth or specifically for loud, it would be fine. Just the fact that like the motion sensor only marks up to 15 people and then it stops working forever means that in stealth, it's only kind of useful because eventually it stops working. 
um, in loud it's not useful because it stops working immediately because so many people are going to run past it that it'll just stop working. The ECM Jammer is only useful in stealth if you're trying to do like really dumb speedrun stuff. Uh, the micro camera is very useful in stealth, like insanely useful in stealth. You put it on the lead guard on overkill and now you always know where he is whenever you press the camera button. Golden Shark, if you're soloing Golden Shark, uh, one of the best uses for the micro camera is to place it on the pillar facing the box that tells you what the next colour is. So that if you're soloing Golden Shark, you don't have to go back to the vault to look at the colour. You can just press the micro camera and then look at what the next colour is. It's genuinely just the most useful thing for self, in my opinion. Uh, Infrasonic Mine, funnily enough, can actually be used for self. Uh, if you are out of pages and a guard sees you, you can just place an Infrasonic Mine on them, detonate it, place another Infrasonic Mine on them, when they start calling, detonate it. Plus another Infrasonic Mine on them. When they start calling, detonate it. You get five of them. You can stun them for like 20 seconds. It's really, really useful if you're at the end of a heist and you just need like that little bit of extra time to like finish moving bags or whatever. But it's only really useful in kind of um, in multiplayer games because obviously you can't like keep putting mines on him and then doing objectives and stuff at the same time. Um, you kind of need someone else to kind of like finish everything up while you keep stunning him. And then you can just alt on it and do it the other way. Have the other person stun them while you finish up stuff. But yeah, it's... Infrasonic mines are kind of useful in self and useful in loud, kind of. Situationally. And then you have the flashbangs, which are basically the same thing as the uh, infrasonic mines, but better and you can take human shields from them and if you have the skill that lets you get throwables back from ammo boxes which i've never taken because i refuse to for some reason uh you can have infinite flashbangs which is pretty cool there's so many things design wise that are just kind of weird i honestly think the skill system is fine though like i've seen some people complain like I i've seen some people complain that the skill system isn't very good or whatever or they don't like it or what have you but i think it's fine as it is it isn't based so much on making you more powerful as much as it is giving you more ways to do things and giving you more options for how you approach things. And in loud, it does kind of make you more powerful for certain things. There are some skills that do just objectively make you more powerful, like um, armor up is literally essential for loud. If you don't have armor up, you are actually trolling. Legitimately the best skill in the game, like objectively. Uh, the armor pacing one is situational. It depends on the weapon you've got, really. If you're running... Um, any of the SMGs or the like light pistols, it isn't really useful. But if you have any other weapon, like if you have a revolver and an and an SMG, then it'll apply to the revolver. If you have an assault rifle and one of the light pistols, it'll apply to the assault rifle. It's also really good, the ammo piercing one, yeah. Because here's the thing, the way the stats are it does nothing on the SMGs, because the SMGs don't have enough armor piercing by default. And this is the thing, the game doesn't explain this. The game has no explanation for this at all because the weapon stats are bars that tell you fucking nothing. Literally, these bars are all completely fucking meaningless. You want to know why? Because um, recoil includes vertical re recoil, horizontal recoil, overall recoil, and gun kick. Horizontal, vertical, and overall gun kick as well. And those are two different things, except there's actually six different things, except four of two... Four of them are kind of the same thing, but they're also not the same thing. And there isn't any mention of armor piercing or actual damage values or what the actual recoil values are or like anything like that. So it's really bad. Handling is by far the absolute fucking worst stat in the game, though, honest to God. Because handling includes swap speed, uh, targeting speed, sprint to fire speed, um, swap weapon speed, uh, probably more things that I'm forgetting about right now. It includes so much shit. Targeting speed, so ADS speed. The handling bar is completely fucking meaningless. Like, genuinely. I would much rather just have a list of all the numbers and then say, oh, it takes this long to aim down sights. Oh, it takes this long to shoot after sprinting. Oh, it takes this long to swap weapons. Instead of a bar that vaguely shows how good all of those things are combined. Because what the fuck? does that mean? Like, what does it mean to have high handling if your, like, aim down sight time is really bad? But yeah, like, the biggest offender, though, is genuinely the armor piercing, because the way um, damage works in this game, when you actually know how damage works, it's really cool, and I like the way they've implemented it, because it's really interesting, and it, like, you can feel it with every weapon without knowing the stats, but actually knowing the stats and how it works is really cool, because basically, 
Every enemy has an armor value and a health value. Weapons have an armor piercing value that is a decimal, so like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Um, and enemies have a certain armor piercing threshold. So the so most enemies is not uh, are not 0.5. Um, shields are one, and I think bulldozers are three. Um, or is it two? Or 2.5, I think it's 2.5. If you're at if the armor piercing value of your weapon is lower than the armor piercing threshold of the enemy, you only deal armor damage. Shields of one does the 2.5, okay. Um, so basically, the armor piercing value means if you have a gun that does zero armor piercing, like all of the SMGs, and you are shooting any enemy, because all of the enemies have, um, have an armor piercing threshold, higher than zero, because it's 0 0.5 at least at the minimum, all the SMGs are only going to do armor damage until they break the enemy's armor. But if you have a armor threshold of, say, one, uh, you'll deal, is it half damage to health and half damage to armor? Armor piercing minus armor threshold times damage. So, so yeah, if you have one armor piercing and you're shooting someone with 0 0.5 armor threshold, you'll do half damage to the health and half damage to the armor, I believe is how it works. Or is it full damage to armor, but half damage to health? It's something like that. It's always full armor damage no matter what. Okay, so yeah. So it's a really cool system and it's really interesting because it means certain weapons are better at like killing certain enemies, like shields. And it also means that certain weapons will always take a lot more shots to kill, while other weapons will take less shots to kill because they have an armor, like armor piercing value. You can't see any of this information in game anywhere. <laughs> Like, they don't explain that enemies have armor. You can see in certain places mentions of armor piercing, but it's never explained what that means. Cutting a shot, for example, your armor penetration is increased. It doesn't tell you that that increases it by 0.1. So a weapon that has, um, say, 0.5 armor piercing will now have 0.6, so you'll deal a bit more health damage. The turret one is the only skill, in, is the only thing in the game that actually mentions armor penetration values increases armor penetration by one that is the only place in the game you get any value which also means that this skill is really fucking good because it increases the uh, damage that you deal to enemies with armor by a fuck ton because it's plus one this is really good this is a really good skill but if you just read this it means nothing because you don't know anything about the values or how it works you have like no context of what this means the, the game is weighted more towards weapons that have high armor penetration because of the way the armor values work but even then like like i said you can still do you can like smgs are still fine like i said the live commander is fine the combat seven is fine the pick is fine i personally do not like these weapons because they take too many hits to kill for me to like really like using them but some people like using them i don't give a fuck doesn't affect me at all use them if you want they're fine weapons it's just for me i don't like it and i think it's because of the armor penetration is the main reason why armor penetration is really good but you don't know anything about it unless you like look it up the sad thing is as well because of how armor penetration works it means that the bison is always better than the castiga i think the only actually no sorry i was gonna say the only case where the castiga were better that we figured out were, was at long range but well, that's not even true, because the bison has higher armor penetration than the Casigo, so it always does more damage at every range. Um, actually, I think that's only if you have cu the cutting shot skill. It's only better at a very specific mid-range. Yeah, so basically the bison is always, pretty much always better than the Casigo, um, in like 99% of situations. And if you have cutting shot, the bison is even better than the Casigo because extra armor penetration. Really, really weird that none of this is explained fucking anywhere, but... Hey, there you go. Yeah, because the health damage that you do with the bison like ends up outdoing the Casigo anyway, so it literally doesn't matter. And the bison, even though it has lower base damage, is still high enough damage, like base damage and armor piercing to one-shot all the same enemies anyway as the Casigo. So basically, if you... Basically, basically the, the role that you pick doesn't really matter, but if you really care about getting it, like, as good as possible, the bison is technically better. <laughs> you can't wait to game balancing and explaining. Yeah, just throw some bars on there. They'll figure it out, right? <laughs> throw some bars on the screen. Uh, the worst part, though, is that, like, some of the um, bars don't even make sense. Like, the fucking suppressor ones, right? Look at this. But yeah, you can see there. Minus damage distance, the damage bar goes up. How the fuck does that one work? <laughs> And it's the same for all of the um, the suppressors on this as well. Slendrick's uh, silencer does the same thing. The beveled silencer doesn't, but that one doesn't say it decreases damage distance. How many armor bags do I have? What do you mean, how many armor bags do I have? A zip line. Let me have a look real quick. Uh, I'll just queue for something random while I'm doing this. Uh, 
but we're gonna actually kill the dirty ice not? But yeah, zipline bags, I've been buying a lot of them. Uh, just because I think it's really funny to have a shit ton of zipline bags is the main reason. The other reason is uh, they're actually really useful. <laughs> but again, you wouldn't know this until, unless you go to the vendors menu, you go to arms dealer, scroll all the way down to the bottom and then buy zipline bags. And they do nothing on dirty ice, by the way. They do not spot on dirty ice. If you use the zipline bag on dirty ice, you've wasted your zipline bag. I have 102. Just in case you're wondering, I have 102 zipline bags. I think I bought like 130 or 40 in total. I've also realized why the ready button doesn't work straight away. Um, like I couldn't, because I couldn't figure that out on the stream. It's because the game's still loading, is the reason. It's just once again, it doesn't tell you anywhere. If the ready button was replaced with like a loading button or something, it might be a bit more obvious instead of having to look at the top and see where it says loading, but... Also, there's a really fun bug right now where if you uh, set the game to invite only, uh, people can still join you through Steam. But yeah, like, in general, I think I think the actual gameplay of this game is fine. And it's just, like, literally everything else surrounding the game that is really, really bad. Having there being no timer in-game, there is a timer in-game. You just have to realise that it only shows up if you open the, like information menu, the like tab menu. Look, I'll show you in a second. There's a timer, it's just that you can't see it by default. See, it's at the top of the screen. It only shows up when you have this menu open though. As soon as you get rid of it, it goes away. Pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know. They could have easily put it above the like private area notification. I mean, it goes there anyway when you're holding tab. I don't understand why they didn't just put it there permanently. So I feel like I would have eventually figured out that that was a thing, even if you hadn't told me about it. But um, yeah, it's it's really not obvious or intuitive unless like you hold tab and look at it. Look at the left side of the screen. Look at how much fucking wasted space. Like, let me just uh, hide myself real quick. Look at how much wasted space is on the left side of the screen. You have the objective at the top. And, uh, it's a that's it. Guard. But yeah, also there's a bug with um, hacking people's phones at the minute, which, where sometimes if you hack someone when they're trying to escort you, they, um, they keep, oh cool, uh, they keep trying to escort you even though they shouldn't be, which is a uh, really cool. I think I kind of just want to get the code to be fair and then I'll just restart. What's the code? 4218. I'll see the one. Uh, not in here. Why am I in here? 997. Is that the thing? Okay, so it's 7 and 9, so it's the VIP woman, which means it's 335. Am I stupid? No, 7 and 9 was the other one, wasn't it? That was the number. That was the number over here. 997, yeah. But, but yeah, like, that's a thing you can do now as well because of the fact that the RNG doesn't reset. You can literally just, like, get the code and then go, all right, I'm going to restart. Because, <laughs> like, it just saves you time. Yeah, the fact that, like, once you complete all of the weapon challenges and you get to, like, over level 100, all you can really do is just grind heists. It kind of sucks. And, like, I was honestly ready to just give up with the game, like, a few days ago because... Watch the there isn't really much to do other than just play heist at this point. Just grind heist for minute amounts of XP so that I can. Actually, you know, I'm gonna do this. Hey, you! Restricted area. I think I'm. I think I'm at a slightly lower frame rate than I normally am, which is why it feels a bit weird to me. But yeah. I should have the code. I. Uh, nine oh nine seven. Yeah. That looks the guard. Okay. But yeah, like, there just isn't, like, enough variation in the heists, and, like, once you've played them all a few times, you've kind of seen just about everything, realistically. And at that point, all you have left to do is just grind to level 100, and then further than that, if you want some of the cosmetics. If you get the weapons to max level, you can complete a challenge for getting the weapons to max level and playing a heist with the weapon. That is actually a challenge. There is a challenge for getting every weapon to max level and then finishing a heist with that weapon equipped. Um, other than that, not really a whole lot point in, uh, in doing it, really. That I can think of anywhere. Oh yeah, this is a bug, by the way. Um, I just realised I have the throwing knives equipped. Thought I heard something. And now the cameras are down. You can do that with a bag as well. 
If you do have a bag, you can do it in casing mode because you don't need to get the mask up to pick up our drop bags. Pretty cool. Like I was going to walk through the manager's office and then go stand in front of the window because I've played this too much by this point. I'm going to walk through the manager's office. And stand in front of this window. Yep. Yeah, most of the attachments just really don't really mean much. Um, some of them are actually worse than ones you get later on. At least from looking at the like the statistic list, because we don't actually know the numbers. Maybe some of the later ones are actually better than the earlier ones, but we have no fucking clue because it doesn't tell you the numbers. Um, Going off the bars and like the information that it gives to you, they look worse. Some of the layer ones anyway for some weapons. It's really weird. It's really, really weird. It's also really sad that this is one of Shade's like most interesting voice lines in the whole game and it's because she actually does something other than speak in the same tone of voice that she speaks in with every voice line. Uh, but I really wish Shade just had like more emotional range in a voice lines because it just isn't very interesting to listen to half the time. Yeah, some of the achievements don't even have challenges connected to them, which is really weird. Uh, oh my god, just let me... That's a thing as well, if you throw people, sometimes you can't tie them up straight away, which is really annoying. Like that, you have to wait for them to like get on the ground first. I'm still wondering where the lead guard is because I haven't seen him. Knows. Part of the reason that the um the patch has been delayed is because they're like waiting for console parity, basically. They're just waiting for the patch to be approved for consoles. So everyone has to like wait now and suffer because of it. Despite the fact this game really needs a patch. There's also the thing of how like noise works, which isn't really explained anyway. I'm pretty sure if I sprint here, he doesn't hear it. But if I open the star and sprint, now he hears it. That's a pretty cool thing, but it's not explained anywhere. So it's just something you have to kind of figure out. Also sprinting can be heard from 10 meters away and sliding can be heard from five meters away. Also that's a thing as well. I, fucking bowling doesn't work half the time. Jumping, manling, climbing. Bowling, whatever you want to call it. Like, I have had so many issues of getting it to work. It's like, I know Cheesy's gonna say, oh, you're just bad, just fucking, it works fine, skill issue, whatever, but I, genuinely, it doesn't fucking work. It just does not work. What the fuck? <laughs> Why did I keep sliding? That's the thing I've noticed as well. Sometimes you just keep sliding after hitting something, even though you probably shouldn't. And this is how the size works. Pretty cool. Because I think you might be able to do this without actually cleaning the um, jewelry as well. But hey, yeah, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I like it when people make themselves useful. I really do think the game was just rushed out the door a little bit too early though, it's kind of just the main issue. If they had just a bit more extra time, maybe a lot more extra time, it would have been fine, but... It's a car. Let's open her up. What? Oh, that's the thing as well, if you press crouch, uh, it cancels lockpicking interactions, but if you press crouch after finishing the lockpicking interaction, it cancels the lockpicking interaction, so it doesn't actually do anything. So you have to pick the lock again. And I just like, I keep trying to like uncrouch after picking. Again, I press space, nothing happens. Really weird. Guard. I don't know. It's fine, guard pathing in this game is fantastic. I do actually like the way detection works in this game though. I like the fact that like you can do goofy shit like that and just kind of like dance around guards if you're like careful about how you position yourself. It's pretty fun. 
Oh no. So fucking sad. I mean, that was my own fault. I accidentally slid was the problem, and I didn't cancel it. <laughs> oh my fucking god! So it's two minutes. Okay. Can I trade someone? Thank you. Do I need three people for the next one? It's four. Okay, never mind. Not doing another one. But yeah, I do really like the um, like overall like gameplay and thingy though. Like the like uh detailing in the world and stuff. Like all the cars have like car alarms that sound different. There's like lots of um environmental sounds that are like really well done and stuff like that. Like, the actual game itself is really good, it's just everything else surrounding it is really bad. Also, snipers on overkill one shot, um, the AI, which is really, really bad. The AI in general just cannot handle themselves on high difficulties. Um, like you really do need like at least one other person to make playing Overkill a lot more manageable. Um, Overkill loud anyway. But yeah, Rock the Cradle especially. Like, Rock the Cradle is a heist that I have very mixed, very, very, very mixed feelings on, right? This is a heist that in theory is fantastic herself. It has so much variation across all the difficulties. On normal, everything is just private areas or public, um, but then you go up a few difficulties and it becomes secure, and then you go up to uh, uh, Overkill, and you're not even allowed into the nightclub. You ha like, the whole entire- like, the whole nightclub is a private area, which is really cool. Uh, the self-objectives are really cool and really fun, and then you realize that you can speedrun it in two minutes in stealth, because the objectives are really, really easily abused. I really, really like this heist if you play it as intended, but if you stealth it, oh my god. Like, if you, if you, if you do it the, like, absolute fastest way, it's so fucked. It's actually so fucked. You don't even engage with, like, half the heist. I was, like, confused when I first saw that people had done this in, like, five minutes, and then I saw someone had done it in two, and I was like, what the fuck? But then you look at it, and it's like, oh. Oh yeah, no, I, I, I entirely understand how and why that works, but that's so fucking dumb. Is this heist the intended way? It's really good! You see the fast way, and it's like, oh. And the thing is, this works on overkill as well. Uh, it's a lot easier on very hard and below because there's less guards and you don't have to deal with the nightclub being private. It takes about the same amount of time anyway. Like, it's genuinely, it's... They, like, it just makes it easier on lower difficulties. That's all it does. It takes about the same amount of time regardless of difficulty. It's actually so fucked. The door's locked. Oh no. There are guards. Oh no. Don't move a muscle. Don't move a muscle. Oh, I thought the other guy was cuffing me for a second there, that's fine. Oh, the game hasn't loaded properly, that's interesting. I'm gonna have some weird quirks then. Actually, if I'm gonna have some weird quirks, I wanna try something, because this always happens the first time I play uh, Rock the Cradle. I wanna see if it, if it happens this time. Hopefully, it's in the right place? Question mark? Ah, shit, it's loaded. Never mind. F blue. But yeah, if this is the first heist that I play after booting up my computer, um, this room doesn't load properly and it's possible to walk into this room before the uh, room loads in because there's none of the walls are here. So you can just walk into here and um, then the room loads in and you, you're already in the room. 
the problem is I haven't been able to get the positioning on it quite right because the first time I did it I ended up behind this wall and then I ended up falling out the map and it doesn't respawn you like Payday 2 does so I fell 2,000 meters very sad. The second time I got stuck inside the server. Uh, so yeah. So basically, you literally just see that, you jump down here, you shoot out that, it's F-blue. Cool, right? There's nobody here, which is very nice. Um, we're already in search, so breaking doors doesn't matter. Uh, this is an alphabetical order, so F is here. Why am I doing that one? F-blue. I'm really like, oh, the was that object? Oh, that was so sad. What the fuck? Uh. But yeah, like, the, the, the fact that it doesn't do that, they haven't, like, done that, is really funny. Uh, there we go. And then back down here. And then, depending on which we escape, we get this is either going to be really easy or slightly awkward. It's that one. Wow, it's really easy. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I, I, I have a feeling they probably just haven't used it. It's probably what it is. And that's the safe, easy way out. Uh, if, it's, if it's on the other side, you can do kind of the same thing, but there's like a bit of a more awkward kind of maneuver you need to do. But other than that, it's basically just that. And that's the heist. That's the whole thing. Um, Everything all right over there? That wouldn't have been, like, close to two minutes, but... Yeah, it was three minutes and 25 seconds. I was a whole minute slower. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, I fully expected them to have something in place to respawn you because they do in Payday 2. They're done in this game. Actually, no, to be fair, the solution to falling through the world in Payday 2 was to respawn you on another player, is what their solution was. Which meant that if... No, it was to respawn you on another player unless it was an offline game. If it was an offline game, it would respawn you in the closest place above where you fell. If it was online, it would respawn you on another player. Which meant if both players were falling out of bounds, you would both be stuck falling forever. Which is really funny, but also really dumb. But yeah, they don't have anything like that in this game right now. If you do the heist properly, it's really fun. If you do it like that, it becomes a two minute grind that you do 40 times and then you do it another 110 times because you need to play this fucking heist 150 times in self. I don't know if level 117 though. I just need, what, 70, 170 more IP? If I do dirty ice seven more times in loud, I can level up. This is a, uh, this is Payday 3. If I do under the surface once in loud, I level up. Holy shit, I'm gonna do under the surface once in loud. I mean, when you can actually play the game, it's pretty okay. It's just, everything around the core game is kind of not very good. And they really need to patch it, but they've delayed the patch. And then the actual patches that are probably gonna change all the stuff people don't like are gonna come at the end of the month or in the next few months so this game really should have been delayed for like three months i mean if it was delayed for three months it could have been a christmas release and that would have been fine i think i really broke a rush lazy and badly thought out the thing is i am fully i fully believe that the developers had the best intentions they wanted to make the best game they could but somewhere along the way they had to have this dumb challenge system they had to rush the game out on this particular date. They were forced to have Always Online for some fucking reason. And all of these things combined have just made it an absolutely miserable experience. Because there are like flashes of really fun gameplay in here. It's just that it's buried underneath so much shit. So, so much shit. And it's so sad. I wish the whole game could just be like playing the game, but it's not. You have to spend an equal amount of time staring at challenges and trying to figure out what you need to do next just so you can level up so you can keep having fun playing the game until you reach a point where you've done all the challenges that you can do and now you just have to play like a million heists to keep leveling up and unlock the stuff you want and then you stop having fun because it's just at this point it's just a perpetual grind a perpetual very slow grind that doesn't really give you anything until you like complete major milestones which is 
Absolute shit. Like, if it was a constant drip feed of progress, it would be fine, but it's not. That's the problem with it. I didn't get the zip line. It's fine. I don't need the zip line, actually, because I'm doing this loud at the end anyway. Oh, Wi Fi circles. Let's talk about the Wi Fi circles. Or rather, let's talk about the fact that the Wi Fi circles just really shouldn't exist. I don't know who decided that Wi Fi circles should exist, but, um,. Whoever it was. Why? The thing is though, like, 99 Boxes has the best incarnation of the circles in this game. Because the circles only take, like, 10 seconds. They're not long at all. In this heist, they are so much longer. It's so bad. Oh no! Oh no! Actually, I don't need to get the right one. What am I doing? The correct spinning literally doesn't matter if all I'm going for is completing the heist, does it? That's the thing as well, because like the best way to do these fucking heist completion challenges is to just ignore the objectives and just finish the heist as fast as possible, which is really counter to like... Oh, hello. Really counter to like the um point of stealing shit. Why is legs so weird? Why is why is legs so weird? I don't like the sound of that. It's a card. I fixed him. I have fixed him. The interesting thing is apparently, um, ten chambers, the uh, devs of GTF are apparent apparently making a uh heist game of their own now. A sci-fi heist game, which I assume will be similar to GTFO, but a heist game. I will be interested in seeing what Ulf does. Maybe Ulf will voice a character again. It's not Crime Boss Rock A City. That's a fucking game. That's true. That is something they said, wasn't it? They That part of the uh, the way they designed the game was to stop people from grinding the same, the same level over and over. So they made challenges to finish every heist 300 times. In total, 150 is still cloud. Pretty cool. It sure did encourage me to not grind. Yeah, you gotta grind every level and so why does that not trip the alarm, by the way? I was thinking about this like a couple days ago. Why does doing that not trip the alarm? It'll be dumb if it did, but like seriously. It feels like it should trip the alarm. <laughs> All right, it's time for my favorite part of this game. Wi-Fi boxes. Oh, Wi-Fi circles. I love Wi-Fi circles. Also, here's a fun glitch. If you stand in between these doors and then close the door, uh, nobody can see you now. You can still ping stuff, but nobody can see you. It's a card. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it, I, I do find it really sad that this game, like, has so much potential to be really good. Uh, E3 7, that's always the same. E3 5, that's kind of annoying that it's on E3, but oh well. Uh, right, so I just want to grab one of the paintings from E4 E7, it doesn't matter if it's real or not. And then... I never opened that. And then I want, um, I haven't done the circles. I was just talking about doing the circles. Oh my fucking god, right? Circle time. I love circles. They're all over there. Okay. <laughs>
Right, now I can go grab one of these paintings. Is he investigating this room? Guard. He didn't even hear me walk over here. What the actual fuck? I ran over there. And the door was closed. <laughs> okay, I guess if they hear you once, they... Yeah, I guess if they just hear you run once, they kind of just go to wherever you are. That's really weird. Uh, I guess I'll just drop it there for now then. Right, so it's E3, E5, which means... Is he being alerted by the painting being missing? He might be, I'm not sure. I don't know what causes that. Sometimes the guards walk into the rooms if the doors are open and then like look at the like open cases and then they'll call in a search. And I don't know what triggers that. Because it seems really random. But yeah, I wonder if it's if you cut the glass. But the thing is, I've never cut the glass. So if it has been because of that, it's been somebody else that's been cutting the glass. And I've just never like seen the cut glass myself. Human. I was gonna say, see within five meters, but uh, it doesn't matter. Eric? The guards that walk Everything along that path. Slow, huh? Yeah, me too. Nothing's going on here. The guards that walk along that hallway um, can see like the bags going along the zipline, like through the window, or when they're just walking down the hall, they can see it. And if you have the um the guards that spawn outside, they can also just see the bags going along the zipline when um. They're wandering around, which is really fun and forces you to go into search mode <laughs> unless you like then follow the bag and pick it up so they can't finish their investigation. But the thing is, if one of the guards in that hallway up there sees one of the bags going along the zipline, they don't actually follow the zipline all the way. They, they open that door there, they walk out the door and then they call in the search. They don't actually go all the way to investigate the bag, they just go out that door and then call it in. Which is really dumb. And now comes the most fun part of the game. Standing in circles. Oh, this is the best exhibit in the whole game, by the way, because you walk in here and then uh, you pull the switch and the motion sensor sends off really cool. Uh, Raven is the motion, it's right here. Yeah. That one is really, really easy. The door open, yeah. Actually, what am I doing? I have the tech. There we go. Watch the guard. And now the circles are in really annoying places. Like, this whole thing slows down this place so much if you're doing it in self, which is just really annoying. And sometimes when you jump through this vent, you slide through it. And now I just need uh, the last painting from E3, and that's it. And then I can go loud and get my sweet, sweet ones. There we go, I slid. I fucking told you it does it. Fucking told you. It randomly slides. What do I even get at level one? I don't know what I get at level one seventeen. I don't know if I get anything at level seventeen. So now I literally just have to make it go loud and then I'm done. What's going on over there? What is the guy? I want to get the guy. Yeah, that is it. The guy. I want the guy. So that I can train him. I thought this, I thought this was the scary room. That's it. Never mind, it's already there. The Since when was it already there? Holy shit, that arrives so fast. Holy shit, I'm level 117. I got 50 C stacks. What did I even get for that? For reaching one level 117. It's not on the paint scheme. Uh was it Iron Kiss? I don't think I had this before. I think it was just Iron Kiss. A mask that I will never buy. This could have been a pattern. 
This could have been a pattern. Why is this not a pattern? Same as why are these... Actually, I guess the bullet holes are kind of like more... They're a bit more, a bit more reasonable. But this could have just been a pattern. Actually, this is a pattern. Wait a sec. Is this not the same thing? Okay, the, the the red isn't quite right. Um, tell me why this is a preset mask. I think the I think the 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 base color is a bit different as well. But you can make basically the exact same mask. I mean, the other one has these like red handprints on the eyes, though. You do, that's not a pattern that you can use because you have the handprints like that like on the side but not over the eyes why do we not have these like this like these like stripes as a pattern i can understand this one this one makes sense this is just a gold dallas mask <laughs> this one makes sense this one makes sense this one maybe not and it's where we couldn't have the stripes as a pattern this one makes sense why is this? This one confuses me so fucking much though. Why is this a preset mask when you can literally make this? We have hardened Maiko at home. Hardened Maiko at home. Like, what the fuck? I, I don't know if there's really much else I need to or want to say. I'm probably going to the stream here to be fair, because I, I don't think there's much else like I, I really want to say or that you need to say. This is just going to be a short stream to be like, after two weeks of playing Payday for you, it's kind of not really anywhere near where it should be and going over a bit of why i think so why i feel this way we're getting these patches like really soon the fact that they delayed the october 5th patch because of console certification and they found new things that need fixing we really should have just had that patch for october 5th because the game's kind of jank i'll keep checking back in with the game obviously because i have enjoyed playing it it's just um at this point I don't know how much more I'm going to be playing it because playing every heist 300 times is kind of shit. Like if I go through my challenge list, I can find some that I'm close to having done, but uh, yeah, I still have to grind it a lot. Like, oh look, dirty ice one more time in loud. I can do that. I can do that and get some free points for it, but then I still need like 10 more challenges to level up again which means doing 10 more of these. Hopefully they get their shit together and fix things and don't go bankrupt at the end of the this uh, first year of the game's development cycle. Um, because I, I, I want to keep playing this game. We'll end there because this, this has been my uh, short two-week check-in with Payday 2 stream. Uh, I will stream again at some point. I do not know when. I do not know when it will be. I don't know what it will be. Because streaming this again, I've noticed that I get pretty bad performance while streaming this. Maybe when I get some PC upgrades in like a few months or whatever, I'll stream it a bit more. After the game, get some updates and is a little bit less shit. Hopefully. Hopefully that happens. But thank you very much for uh, watching and good night. I will probably stream again at some point in the next month. Probably.